By the end of this video, I hope you'll feel very empowered through your knowledge of the new construction process here in Orlando, because here's the thing, there's hundreds of new neighborhoods all across Central Florida, thousands of new homes being sold each year and currently for sale. And so in today's video, I hope to get as granular as possible, talking about the new construction process from start to finish, things to consider, as well as some frequently asked questions. So naturally, when you're thinking about buying new, one of the first questions you might ask yourself is, which builder do I go with, especially here in Central Florida where there are tons of different builders and even more announcing their entrance into the area and so I think there's a couple of things that you consider one being the floor plan and I will say oftentimes if somebody reaches out to me about the construction this is typically why they're asking me about a certain builder because they saw a floor plan that appeals to them and their family's needs but secondly you might want to also check out the standard features of each builder and you'll quickly find out not all builders are created equal. A fairly simple example of this would be some builders standard offer an eight foot ceiling height on the first floor as part of their build with option to upgrade to a nine foot, 10 foot ceiling for a fee, of course. Whereas some builders offer that nine foot ceiling height, that 10 foot ceiling height straight up front as a standard feature. And so that could be the difference of a couple thousand dollars simply by the builder that you choose. Some also have features that they're really proud of. For example, Lancy Home with their Remy Halo air purification system included in their homes. And so each builder might have something unique to them or not that requires you to upgrade to the type of house that you would want. And so digging into the standard features is something to note as well. The third would be warranties. Now, typically here in Orlando, most builders have a warranty as followed. You have a one year warranty with the builder, sort of like a bumper to bumper covering. And then you'll have a two year AC plumbing and electrical warranty followed by a 10 year structural warranty. Now, certain builders have extra warranties. For example, Pulte with their five year water intrusion warranty or MI Homes with their 10 year construction defect warranty in addition to a 10 year structural warranty as well. Overall though, most of these production builders will have that one to 10 warranty as standard. Now, I also wanted to address the notion of a good versus bad builder. Certain builders sort of have the public perception of being bad, low quality. Some have the perception of being good, high quality. The reality is in most cases, the work is contracted out. And so a funny joke I always like to say with my clients is that the Toll Brothers aren't the actual people building the home themselves. And so you can have a good or bad build really from any builder, theoretically. And that's not to say or discount the fact that certain builders just seem to have a more consistent track record of having more attention to detail, more craftsmanship, better customer service on the back end versus other builders. However, just on the basis of the name of the builder, I wouldn't necessarily disqualify them up front. Finally, in regards to builder considerations, you might wanna also consider financing incentives going on in that community at the time. For example, some builders may be offering a lot more incentive because they're not selling as much currently versus somebody selling like hotcakes. They're probably doing the bare minimum where incentives are considered. And so using all these different categories as a baseline to compare builders, especially in neighborhoods where there's like five builders in one neighborhood, for example, Westland Park over in Sunbridge, this will give you a good basis ground to kind of see what the different builders offer and which one might be best for you. And then moving from there, you're gonna be looking at what type of new construction am I looking for? And I always like to put this in three main categories. You got the move-in ready homes, which as the name implies, they are move-in ready or pretty darn close. All the options have been selected. So the structural options, for example, raising the ceiling height, like I mentioned earlier, or extending the lanai, and also your design options are chosen, the type of countertop fixtures that are gonna be in the home. Usually the price you see on these homes are representative of the all-in price, and usually the homes that the builders are more willing to negotiate on because they wanna get rid of it as quickly as possible. The second category would be the inventory homes, or post-structural, post choosing all the structural options that the builders have chosen in advance, but in most cases, you can actually go to the design center still and pick out the cabinets, the countertops and that kind of thing and make it your own in that way. This might be a really good option for you if you still wanna take advantage of the customization aspect of building a new home, but you also don't have a 12 month plus timeline for it to be built from scratch, which I actually covered a community recently that only sells either move-in ready or 
spec homes as some would call them. So feel free to check that out. But the third category is going to be your to be built homes. Again, as the name implies, this is for homes that haven't even started yet because you're gonna be choosing the lot all the way down to the color of the doorknob. This is gonna be for the folks who want to customize everything about their new home. And this is gonna give you the full range to do that within the confines of what the builders offer, of course. And so let's dive into what that traditional new construction process looks like. Now, what are the things you need to decide when you're initially building your home with a builder? First one's going to be floor plan. That's gonna be most important. The actual plan that you live in, something that fits your family best. This is going to take due diligence both on your part if you're going alone or if you're going with a real estate agent hopefully myself, we're combing through the different floor plans that the builders offer in the different community or communities to see which one works best for you. And then we're gonna pair that up with the structural options. Again, that's referring to, do you wanna raise the ceiling height on the first floor? Do you want the lanai out back because you like to have your morning coffee outside while your dog runs in the backyard? Do you wanna convert that flex room to a study or do you wanna turn it into an extra bedroom or bathroom? All these structural changes will need to be decided at time of contract. Again, these are all going to be predetermined by builder as to what options you have to select. And so going back to the selection of the builder that you choose, some builders have more flexibility in the changes you can make to each floor plan than others. And so that's also something to consider as well. But once you got your floor plan down, you have a good idea of some of the structural options that you wanna make, you're gonna to wanna to start to look at the lot. What lot do I want to sit on? And then comes the concept of lot premiums. Lot premiums are an added cost based on the lot's desirability determined by the builder themselves. And so for example, if your lot backs up to a golf course, that's gonna be more expensive than a lot that backs up to just another house versus a lot on the cul-de-sac versus a lot that has a water view. I've seen lot premiums go from zero to well over $100,000 with production builders. It just depends though if you want to spend that money on the lot versus spending that upgrading your home. But it is going to be a cost to consider when building new. Also, you're going to need to consider the elevation of the home, the exterior facade of the home. This is going to change everything from sometimes even the type of roof that you get the windows, how many, how the windows are oriented. Sometimes you might have modern slanted roof lines because it's a modern elevation versus Mediterranean with a lot of stonework on the exterior and things of that nature. So now that you've selected everything, it's time to pay up, but not entirely. You are going to be required though to put down a deposit at time of contract typically up to 20% here in Orlando, and that depends on if you're a cash buyer, foreign national, conventional, FHA, veteran. Typically what I see most common is right around that 5% to 10% mark. Shortly after going under contract, you're required in most cases to make a formal application for the loan to get approved within that first 30 days. That does not, however, keep you approved for the entire duration of the process. And this is where a lot of people, especially coming out of the low interest rates into higher interest rates, messed up and kind of lost out really bad. For example, here's a scenario of what had happened in the past. A buyer would get approved for a home, say at 600,000 on a 4% interest rate, comes around to the completion of the build, interest rates are now seven, eight percent for them. They can't qualify for that home anymore, which causes them to lose out on the home, and in some cases lose out on their deposit that they put down at time of contract, which is why often if somebody's doing a to be built, you wanna make sure you're not shopping at the top tippity top of your budget. You shouldn't be doing that regardless, but especially if you are buying new, you wanna have a buffer there in case interest rates were to go up and that changes your purchasing power. Now you may have noticed I didn't touch on design options at all. Choosing the countertops, cabinets, or all that kind of stuff at time of contract because typically you don't. You usually have an appointment with the design center, sometimes more than one appointment, to select out all those different options that are available to you at that time. And this is also where it again becomes important the builder that you choose dependent on what you're after with new construction. Some builders offer what they call packages. And so, for example, you'll have one package that gives you white cabinets with darker countertops or lighter countertops with darker cabinets, but you don't really get to do it a la carte. Whereas some builders that are higher on the customization scale 
are gonna give you that option to choose every single thing within reason of the home cosmetically. And so me not including that up front is based on the model of you actually going to the design center after contract to choose out the different finishes that you want on your home a la carte. But what actually happens next? What are the actual steps in the construction of your home? Well, the first one is going to be permitting where they have to submit the plans. That can sometimes take all the way up to six months I've seen for clients of mine, but typically you're looking within the first month to three months. Then comes the foundation stage, which is usually the time I start actually going out to the site to take photos and videos so you can get excited you're seeing the home start to get up from the ground up and then from there you go into framing which is where you see the house go vertical always an exciting time you start to see the shape of the home take place followed by electrical roof and insulation now after all those are completed you get to another crucial step in the new construction process which is the pre-drywall walkthrough slash optional inspection almost all builders in central florida will allow you to bring in a third party inspector to inspect the home pre-drywall and i always 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 recommend doing this a new home is not a perfect one again all this stuff is contracted out and these guys are working on a ton of different homes as well and so inevitably there are going to be some things that they miss or downright do not in the best way a simple example of a common miss i've seen come up over and over and over again across different builders on these pre-drywall inspection reports are these missing plates these little things right here they guard against someone drilling through the drywall once it's up through into a wire that metal plate stops from drilling into that and so i've heard horror stories from inspectors where they're coming back to brand new homes where somebody drilled through a wall into a water line of some sort caused a massive leak throughout the house which wouldn't have necessarily happened if that plate was there so they are very important oftentimes just going through so many places to put them these guys will often miss that loose fasteners missing window sealant damage to the firewall damage to the sheathing there are plenty of things that could go south or just simply unchecked at this point in construction so again always recommend you getting that pre-drywall inspection also secondly what's really important at the pre-drywall walk to take note of is if you had added any other extra electrical options to make sure they are in the places that they need to be. Seems simple, but often missed to where you might have paid for extra lighting in a certain room and the pre-wires aren't there. Stuff like that is where you get the opportunity at the pre-drywall to check and confirm, making it a very crucial part of the process. Now, beyond this point, I do see an uptick in my client's excitement because the drywall goes up and the home really starts to feel like a home. You get a feel of the dimensions, the space. You start to see more of the interior work being done. And so a lot of your options that you've chosen months ago are starting to come to life right before you and it's a really exciting time the second walkthrough you'll have with your construction manager is going to be that homeowner's orientation though and so that's going to typically be just about two to three weeks out from the completion of your home where he's walking you through all the different systems of the home how everything works i also like to refer to this stage as the blue tape green tape ceremony if you've seen videos or photos of homes with a bunch of different blue tape all over the home essentially the blue tape is typically marking any cosmetic imperfections that you can see exciting time to nitpick the home really get it to the standard that you want it to be making sure everything that you've purchased is there everything is in order and you sign off on the things needed to be done and typically the construction manager would like to come back out and have you sign off on these completed items before heading to closing now here are my answers to some of the more frequently asked questions about the new construction process number one being can you negotiate on the price of a new build my answer is it depends on the type of new build that we're talking about going back to those categories if you're looking for a move-in ready where the home is already complete the builder is paying holding costs just to keep the home up and running they want to offload that as quickly as possible and is where you'll have most success with negotiating off price i've done it before so it's not something i'm just talking about it is certainly possible to negotiate on a move-in ready home both on price now for everything else for the most part it becomes more difficult especially when you factor in how that community is performing on a month-to-month -month basis but especially if you're looking at a to-be-built home where you're choosing everything 
99% just to cover myself instead of saying 100%, you're not gonna have any success there. The reason why builders really don't like to move on price as much and they'd rather give you some design credit is because they wanna keep the comps up in the neighborhood. They don't wanna discount a particular floor plan by a heavy amount, then all of a sudden that becomes a comp and lowers the value of the entire neighborhood. So that's sort of their reasoning behind it, but is possible in certain cases. Can you buy a lot and sit on it? No, the answer is no for that one with production builders. Now, if you're looking to go with a custom builder where you're buying a particular lot and you're seeking out builders to build that home for you, that's an entirely different process. Let me know if you'd like me to cover that in future videos, but for production builders, that is certainly not the case. How long will it take for my house to be complete? Typically what we're seeing here in Orlando is right around five to 12 months. All builders contracts virtually, they have a clause that allows them to take up to two years for the home to be built. Now, in some rare cases, I've actually seen that happen here in Central Florida, back in the pandemic when everything was a lot slower and all the issues that we had then, uh, nowadays, most builders are fairly on time. One quick piece of advice in the finance department with new construction is when you're getting the estimates for how much your monthly payment is gonna be with everything included, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, make sure for that tax section that they're actually giving you an estimation based on the value of the home once it's being built because the current tax bill would look like in the first year at least on the value of the land, which is a lot less. And you may be surprised if you get an estimate that's like 200 bucks a month for taxes versus 500 bucks when the value is being placed on the home being built. So stuff like that is what you really need to look out for new construction. It's the little things. And if you are looking for a real estate agent to take you through that process on your build here in Orlando, I'd love to be that real estate agent in your corner. So feel free to shoot me an email, info at orlandowithmario.com, and I'll be happy to get the process started with you.